Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? This is Todd Bookspan, and we've also um, got Dave here as well this morning. Hope you guys are all doing great. Um, I know you guys just got the, the notification on this week, so thank you guys for, for jumping on with uh, short notice. Um, you know, this, uh, this call today I think is, is a good time to sort of set our, set our intentions as we go into the end of the year, right? Take a little bit about insane productivity and what we've all been learning, whether you're on, you know, stuck still in a couple, you know, early modules, you know, one, two, or three, or whether, you know, you're now in the group that's in, you know, eight to ten. Um, it's a great time to sit back and focus on, on where you're at, what you've learned so far, and then where you want to go in two phases, right? What is it you want to accomplish between now and December 31st in order to make sure that you can launch into 2017 with the most opportunity possible, with, you know, set up for success in the best possible way. Um, and then you also want to be thinking about, okay, well, what is it I'm also going to be doing in January? And so our goal right now, I think, is let's run the best play that we can all run between now and the end of the year. And then as um, we do our December calls, we can start certainly talking about ways to set up our 2017 in the best way possible. So um, this call, as you guys know, is about us, right? We're going to need to get some feedback from you guys on what it is that you would like to do. Um, what I love is, is that Dave uh, put to the mortgage coach community, you know, a couple of documents that we've been working on as a group. And um, certainly something I think that we can, we can talk about today is that mortgage coach values and why worksheet. Um, we've had some previous conversations about it, um, but I think it's one of the things that uh, a lot of people haven't done yet and would be worth uh, bringing front and center and, and having a discussion around. So if any of you have done it, I would love to hear from you on it. If you haven't done it and you're worried about it, love to hear from you about it as well. Um, that is kind of off of module six in case you guys are wondering the setup and where, where that piece is from. And then we've also got that weekly reminder sheet that Dave's published. And you guys, when you look at it, I hope you see, that, especially those of you who've been on a lot of the calls, um, this has your thumbprints all over it, right? This has been feedback that we've sought from all of you. Um, and again, what you'll probably see on that is depending on where you are, you'll see some ideas on there that go back to module one. And then you'll also see some ideas on there that you have no idea where the heck they came from. And I promise you, you'll get there. And so um, as always, there's no spoilers within this, within this group. There's nothing that you're going to hear today that's going to make a future module uh, not as not as fulfilling as it would be otherwise. And so, um, you know, my goal will be to, you know, again, I'm going to kind of do what we've been doing the last few weeks. Um, you'll kind of hear me talk about unmuting you, so I'll kind of give you a warning. You'll hear your name called. Now, now, you've got a couple of options. If you've never spoken on this call and I call on you, um, don't panic, first off. Um, don't freeze. If, if you truly don't, don't want to be called on, that's okay, right? I always look for people who raise their hand first. I'll warn you right now, nobody has their hand raised, which means I'm going to have to call on somebody. Um, so if you do want to talk, um, I, would love to see, I would love to see a hand uh, come up. If you um, don't want to talk, don't, don't feel any pressure, right? If I call on you and you don't have anything to add, it's okay to say, you know what, I passed today, Todd, and um, I apologize in advance if, if I call on you. And what I love about this is um, I feel like I know a lot of you now, uh, from these last few weeks of, of calls, and I also feel like there's certainly some of you that I've, I've not talked to yet, so I look forward to that as well. So um, at this point, that's enough of me talking. As I start unmuting people, what I would love to hear is, um, again, here's, the, here's the, all the things that you can address. Hopefully you won't say pass, but you can. Um, I'd love to hear um, anything that was successful for you this week with Insane Productivity, whether it's something from the newest module that you're really excited about or whether it's something from early on that you're still doing and it's been a successful game changer in your life. Number two, any struggles that you have. Again, I think that the biggest growth that we've had in this is when you guys have said, hey, I'm really struggling with this, I'd like help with this, because ultimately what that does is it gets other people thinking about how they can add value to the community by answering that question. Um, and then the third thing is, is anything with regards to that mortgage values and why worksheet. Again, it's right there on the Facebook group, so if you see that, you can pop it open real quick, and also those 12 weekly reminders. So any of those things that you think would be good. and in, in there, again, if, I think on the 12-week reminders, if there's something that you think would be a great reminder but that's not there, um, let us know. Um, I can tell you I emailed Dave my feedback on it this morning. And so uh, 
you know, I'm kind of excited to see what his thoughts are on it when he when he reads it, and then we can go from there. So, you know, it's always easiest for me to call on somebody who I know is going to who who loves to talk and add value to this group. So I'm going to unmute Mark Thompson and hear um, how he's doing. He's always got uh, some excitement for all of us. So, uh, how are you today, Mark? Wow, good morning. I'm doing great. It's nice to be here. You know, it's, uh, glad to have you uh, as always as a contributor to the community. So, um, how are you doing with insane productivity this week? Yeah, no, great question. Um, I am still stuck on module eight, and okay. um, and enjoying it. Um, I uh, what I do, I I went and hid in a uh, local coffee shop and just really embraced it for like the third time. Um, and it's something I'm just continuing working with. And it, so the big thing for me is really understanding what uh, my vital few tasks are. But then really trying to figure out, okay, if this is my vital few, uh, what are the things that I need to make sure that my team, which I have a, a transaction coordinator and a processor on my team, and how do I make sure that they're doing what it is that they're supposed to be doing and what are their vital three uh, and the things they're focusing on. So um, that's kind of where I'm at and uh, kind of going through the process. And the interesting thing is as I'm doing this, then it's, it's November. Um, and November for me is always a time for uh, really kind of taking a look at a, a year in review. You know, what was 2016 like? Uh, what did I do that I um, accomplished? And what are things that I really wish that I could have accomplished? And how can I flush that down the toilet and start preparing for 2017? So the module eight is really kind of addressing a lot of things, which is kind of focusing me on really kind of throwing it all out there and putting things together in place so I can make sure I'm as productive as I want to be and achieve um, all of my goals in 2017. Yeah, I think module eight, I've kind of said it all along, is such a, such a big module. And, you know, I went back to re-listen to it this week, and, you know, the first thing that jumped out to me was that, was that you know, we had Dave Gallegos in there, we had uh, Jennifer DePolice with her with her takeaway in there, and we also had Dave chime in, and so that just told me right there that you know everyone kind of had the same idea around that module, and you know we've been talking a lot about the vital few. What are you identifying as your vital few right now? Have you narrowed it down, or you still have a bigger list that you're trying to narrow it down to? You know, still trying to narrow it down. I mean, I think the first and foremost one is my job is prospecting. Um, you know, I like to think of myself as a rainmaker. Um, I'm working on uh, what I do really well is do initial consultations and really identifying my clients' goals and needs and desires. Um, in honor of a um, mortgage coach, you know, preparing my total cost of ownerships, which I work on doing for all of my clients. Um, and then marketing. Um, I love marketing. I love putting together creative ideas to make my message as simple and clear as possible, but as also being able to add value to my clients. I love that, and I'm hoping that resonates with a lot of the rest of you on here. And, and the other thing that you said that I'd love to pick your brain on is you mentioned the vital few with your team. And so have you already approached them with that idea, or are you just trying to develop that strategy now? Um, I'm just trying to figure out um, how, to, how to come up with that strategy. Um, I'm kind of thinking I need to digest this and do it myself so that I really understand it and then figure out a way to be able to present it to my team to get them to embrace it and figure out what their vital few is. Does that make sense? No, I love that. And I would love if any of you have, have done this with your team or have ideas. I'll kind of share what I just did with, with my team on the sales side is I actually asked them to send me what they thought their vital three functions were. And my first aha was is I didn't do a very good job explaining it because what they sent me, I got, my, I got the vital four from somebody and, and some of theirs were what I would consider like what Darren would say really succinct. So it told me I needed to go back and, and explain it to him differently. I, I must not have done it well the first time. Um, and I asked them for their feedback, what they thought it was first, so I didn't tell them. Um, and then now that they've given me theirs, then I'm going to, I know in my mind what I think their vital few are. And so now we're going to have a meeting around that so we can come together. But I didn't want them to think I was telling them what their vital functions were. Um, that was just my take on it. And, you know, I guess I guess it'll be interesting to hear how everyone else does with it if they've done it. Um, so if you've done that, we'd love to see a hand come up because it'd be great to hear your feedback while we're on that piece. Or even if you've just identified your own vital few, that would be great. Hey, that, real, does that make sense, Mark? Yeah, I know that sounds great. I I definitely love to learn or, or hear how you presented that to your team as well. Sure, so we can talk you. about that if nobody else has any other any other Good. things to uh, jump in on. Did I hear Dave Savage there, or was that my own, or am I hearing things? 
No, you, you heard me. Thanks, Todd, for letting me jump in. So, yeah, Eric, so, Mark, love love the process you're going through. And, and I, I feel the same thing that as I've been going through the program, number, you know, module eight is, is just huge. Uh, and I, I've been very intentionally asking a lot of top professionals, you know, what are your vital, th vital three? And, and so far, prospecting is landing on everybody's list universally and, you know, the borrower conversation. I've heard it described a lot of different ways. Uh, I do want to just shine a light on the way you described it, total cost of ownership. I, I had not actually heard someone say it the way you did. And, and, and knowing that the way we can be super unique, deliver a lot of value, is when, as a mortgage professional who's providing debt, we could help show people how to build wealth with real estate. And so it's, it's clear that you, you're, you're doing that. Uh, would love to know if other folks have another term in the way you describe your borrower conversation in a way that's valuable to the consumer. I think just saying total cost of ownership conversation, I mean, that, that's valuable. That's different. That's a reason for a realtor to give you a referral above just a prequal. So I just wanted to shine a light on that. Thanks for sharing. Looking forward to hearing what other people um, have to say in terms of what their vital vital three are. And Todd, I'll let you roll. I just wanted to shout a light out a few of those things. You know, I, I loved it because I actually wrote down that total cost of ownership as well. I, I, I too, had never heard anyone say it quite that way. So I really, uh, I really like that a lot. And uh, is that something, Mark, that you continually use with people, or is that just something new? Um, no, it's 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 something I've been doing for years and years and years, and it's just a matter of. Um, it's a differentiating factor. You know, I've been using the scripts of, you know, I look at mortgages a little bit differently than most. Um, I don't believe that everybody should have a mortgage, but, you know, I really do believe that everybody wants to feel financially secure. So one of the ways that we can do that is to identify your goals and dreams and then really make sure financially it makes sense through a process that we call the total cost of ownership. I love that. I love that. So I'm thinking oh. a lot of you on the call are, are thinking the same thing I'm thinking. You're thinking, hey, when that recording comes out, I'm going to go back and write that down. So um, that would be a good action plan for a lot of us as a, as a script to swipe and adapt and, and use with our, with our clients. That was, uh, that was awesome. All right, so anything else, Mark, hey, wait, you would whoa, like whoa, us whoa, to address whoa. today? Whoa, 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 hey, whoa, 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 Dave. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's 30 seconds of awesomeness. Uh, I actually just scheduled a call with a marketing consultant that I've, I've had on retainer off and on for for decades, actually. And he's become a personal friend. His name's Robert Stover. And we had we had lunch this week, and we, we talked about the whole Tuesday call is going to be how to differentiate yourself in 30 seconds. And, and Mark, you just did that. You did it in about 15 or 20 seconds. So I would like to get a script on that. So if anybody writes it down, post it in Facebook, and let's, let's write up some other 30-second scripts. You know, how are you differentiating yourself within the borrower conversation in the first 30 seconds? 30-second scripts. Let's, let's go to school on that together. So I'll let the conversation continue to roll, but I thought that was powerful. I like that. Let's go to school on that together. That's, uh, that's another good quote. Um, all right, anything else, Mark, that you want this group of uh, fellow mortgage and same productivity folks to uh, address as we as we roll on in this call today. No, I think the biggest thing is that I love to learn to uh, hear about other people's vital views and how they're approaching their team with that. Two big things love for it. me. Love it. Awesome. Thank hey, thanks, Mark. As always, appreciate your contribution. It's my honor. All right, so look at that. We're going to go to school together today. I think that's going to be my new opening for uh, all of our future calls. Um, I'm going to uh, unmute Aaron Johnson. I'm going right to the top. It's only a problem that you have when your name is first in alphabetical order. So um, we haven't heard from Aaron in a while. How are you doing today, Aaron? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. That's, uh, that's good. How, how can we help you get back in the swing of things? Where, where are you at in insane productivity right now? You know, I, um, I'm on Chapter 10. Uh, week 10, actually, I guess is the way you describe it. And uh, I've actually been gone for about a week, so I'm trying to get reoriented. So I'm just trying to catch up and listen and uh, get refocused. Perfect. So anything that we can discuss today that would be helpful for you and anything that you're struggling with? You know, the thing I'm struggling with right now is getting on that Facebook group. I'm not a Facebook user. 
And I am having a hard time. It looks like there's a lot of great information on there. You've posted some really good stuff, but I can't find it. All right. So tremendously. And then next week I'd be uh, more engaged. <laughs> I will make I will make sure that you're in the group. I'll invite you if you're not. And then okay. really for me, I just go and I type in insane productivity, and it pulls it up because I've been there enough. But if you Google, I mean, if you go into the search bar on Facebook and type in insane productivity. It should come up if you're a member, but I will make sure that, that you are a member as we're on here. And my guess is that probably Marcy, who's lurking in the background, is probably doing that right now. Um, yeah. But uh, it, it, we'd love to see it, you in there. And it is a secret group that you have to be invited to, so we, we will make sure you get invited. And through email, we'll, we'll confirm that you, you have access to it. Great. I'd appreciate that very much. I appreciate it. Awesome. Good. It's been a, this has been, I've learned a lot, you know, it's helped me get really refocused this whole insane productivity because um, I was really unfocused there for a while and really getting frustrated uh, prior to starting this. And just each, each week I've learned something new that I've really been able to, to apply beginning with uh, the first two weeks talking about how much time we waste on uh, on uh, with our with our technology and being able to um, just focus I use the uh, the 90 minutes I use that for everything whether I'm inputting a loan application or I'm planning and doing my marketing whatever it is I block out that time and I just do it and don't let anything else interrupt me so that that in itself has been a big help uh, along with uh, you know, the other thing is, is choosing three priorities and focus on that. I'm working on that as well, getting ready to uh, start planning for, for next year. So what have you identified as your three priorities, if you don't mind me asking? Um, one of them is, is marketing. I'm setting up, one of the things that I love to do is, is speak and, uh, and teach. And I do teach um, continuing education classes for the Association of Realtors here in San Diego. I'm getting ready to expand that uh, on, a, on a much uh, more in-depth level for next year. So I'm working on that. That's one of my priorities along with my marketing. The other, of course, is uh, prospecting every week, you know, getting more focused on my, on my prospecting. And then really trying to develop a team. I work by myself. Of course, I've got a processor and, and everything, but I'm really trying to uh, figure out uh, how to get some folks that I can delegate that to and start to uh, uh, freeing up myself from the things that I don't like to do to doing the things that I do like to do. Love it. Love it. That uh, seems to be of my coaching clients. The number one concern they all have right now is developing a team. So um, I'd love to hear from that. And I'd love to hear from any of you on the call who've built a team anywhere that you found success, anywhere that you, that you struggled. Is there anything else, Aaron, that you would love to hear on the call today that we could uh, add some value to you if we can get the group talking about it? I can't think of, think about it right off the top of my head here, but uh, I appreciate everything you guys are talking about. It's great. Awesome. Hey, hey, real, awesome. so, real, quick, real quick before we go off that, you know, when you said one of your vital few is prospecting, you know, what, what is winning the week for you from a prospecting perspective or winning the day? You know, what, what does that mean? Like, what are the goals? It's, when I can sit down and I can, I can make the calls that I have to make, uh, get in touch. I, I tend to go in so many different directions because I'm working by myself, whether it's focusing on inputting a loan application, doing a pre-qualification, um, trying to get a loan closed, solving problems. It's like I think somebody on the call one time said that uh, there's two types of loans, ones with, ones with problems and ones with solved problems. And uh, it seems I spend a lot of time resolving those issues and stuff. So. Um, if I didn't, with my prospecting, set, set down that time that I have to make the calls, uh, send out the emails, write the thank you notes, do those things, that's just, for me, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Now, do you, do you delineate any of your prospecting goals between borrower and partner, realtor? Do you, do you actually break that down? or sure is do. It ex, ex, and, and do you have a... A number of realtors that you want to talk to or meet with daily or weekly. You know, any any metrics or goals that you might share with the team? 
Well, I'm, I'm trying to expand that um, to bring on some, some new realtors. There's about, uh, I'm going to say 10, 12 that, that I try and talk to every week. Um, and I'm trying to expand that some more and find the ones that are productive. I, I, I've got a whole list of people that aren't working or not, you know, very productive, shall I say. And I'm trying to expand that and find uh, more productive realtors that I can, can work with and start developing a relationship with. That's one of my goals is uh, over the next uh, 45 days between now and New Year's. Love it. Love it. Well, hey, thanks for the transparency and sharing that. I think it's always helpful for everybody to hear it. And then one last question, and Todd, I'll let you take it back. Uh, when you think of, you know, you've gone through 10 modules now, and just listening to you, it sounds like the jam sessions, having the intentionality and the, the three vital metrics have been the strong suits. If there was one struggle or challenge that you've had, what what would be the biggest struggle or challenge that you've had 10, 10 modules in? Is there anything that you just think of that's, that's really causing pain or struggle? Prior to, to starting uh, the group here, um, my biggest problem was just the frustration of this business um, in going in so many directions. I hate sitting in front of a computer and inputting stuff. Uh, I have ADD and it just drives me crazy. Okay? I find it very frustrating and I find that uh, Encompass can be very slow and, <laughs> and frustrating for me. And, Working on, on uh, one of the things I've learned through this process, again, goes back to using those jam sessions and just focusing on that, and along with some other stuff I've learned from, uh, I've been doing, I, I, in fact, I just this weekend went to uh, Tony Robbins' Unleash the uh, Power Within, and uh, some stuff that I learned there has really helped me to break that down and just focus on what i got to get done. and, and cut out all the other distractions and, and change my attitude about it. So it's been a combination of both of those. That's awesome. Hey, by, by the way, when you said you had ADD, were you saying that in jest or, or do you actually have ADD? I actually have it. I was diagnosed with it a few years ago, okay? Uh, and uh, I actually took um, Stratera for a while, which helped me, but it also drove up my blood pressure, and I hate taking drugs. Okay, so <laughs> um, so it, it, that that in itself has has been a struggle, but I've, I've lear I'm learning to overcome it without the drugs. And Bye on, brother. And some of the stuff that I've learned here has really helped that. Yeah, I I, I also have ADD, and I there's a there's a, a a podcast called Faster Than Normal. They're they're just normal. They're, Fast, faster than normal, and they're just 30 minute hits. You know, just 30 minute podcasts. Uh -huh. I, I, it's, it's, you know, the guy who does it is, you know, very extreme ADD, and he okay. interviews. He interviews incredibly successful people. Hal Elrod, you know, is one of them, and a couple other people that you might recognize their names. Uh, Seth Gooden, but I, I recommend you check it out. You know, as someone with, you know, ADD, there's some, there's some good ideas. And uh, worth your time. Check it out. Faster than normal well, podcast. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for yeah. all the transparency. That was an awesome conversation. You know, uh, really, back to you, brother. One of the things I would add that I really appreciate about uh, about this group and, uh, and and what you guys are doing is is that from the first call that I was on, which gosh, I guess what was that ten weeks ago? Um, one of the things I realized is is that I'm not alone in my struggles in this business. Um, it seems that even though there's some incredibly successful people in the group and on the calls and stuff, everybody is, is struggling with much of the same thing. So I appreciate you guys bringing that out. I love that. That's, um, that's, that's so true. And as Dave said, I appreciate your transparency. Um, I'm going to mute you, Aaron, and feel free to raise your hand and add some more, but thanks for that. There's still no hands up, so if anyone wants to raise up some hands, it was interesting. I actually um, took a hike on Saturday morning with uh, with a couple of guys, and I realized when we stood at the top of Camelback Mountain in Phoenix, and I added up, I, I was the lowest producer of the three, my team, 
Um, but between our three teams, uh, we'll close $600 million um, this year. And, and one of the guys was Josh Metal, who's a really frequent contributor to Mortgage Coach. If you haven't listened to any of the calls um, in the Mortgage Coach library that Josh has been on, um, it's really a must-do to put on your list. But what I loved about it is, is just what Aaron just said, is that here we are I'm hiking up the hill with two other guys with, with great teams, and everyone has the same struggles. And so um, it all comes with asking the, you know, great questions. And so um, you know, the other guy, Josh and I, we get together once a quarter. We have for the last few years, and we frequently talk in between. Um, and the other guy was kind of new to the group. And, um, and it was funny because Josh is a huge Darren Hardy fan, although he's not part of this insane productivity group. And, he, and he's a big believer in bookending your day and setting your intentions for the day. Really, this stuff that's on uh, Dave's. Uh, 12 weekly reminder checklist. Um, and so we asked this new guy, well, how do you know, tell me about your day. And, they, and the guy's like, well, you know, it's just like everyone else's day. You know, I go in and, and the fires happen and I put them out. And he's like, no, no, tell me about your day. And I'm like, no, what he means is tell me what you do. What time do you get up? What is it you do in the morning? What's that routine look like? And he's like, oh, okay, I get it, right? He's like, okay, I get up four days a week at 5.30 and do it. But in the end, all three of us see ourselves and our teams all with the same struggles and they're the same struggles that we all have and so I love that you pointed that out Aaron because I think that's where we grow from each other right so um, you know as as we go through this and we're further along in the modules um, it's just great that you guys are all jumping on um, and sharing and so um, I'm gonna unmute JC Coleman JC so be warned um, hopefully you're okay with that how are you doing today JC doing pretty well how are you doing doing excellent Doing excellent, thank you. So, uh, give give us an update. Uh, what successes and what struggles are you having right now with insane productivity? Okay, so I, I finished it out, um, and I'm going back through, starting from step one. I uh, loaded it into the car, got a 45 minute drive each way. So I'm excited to go through and see how much growth I've gotten since the first go around. But um, I'd say I'll start with struggles first. And really, the, the biggest struggle I have is maintaining my 90-minute you know, burn uh, jam session. I, I get distracted a lot, and there's a lot of stuff going on here, and I guess I need to be even more protective with my time uh, because I, I realize that these jam sessions uh, serve me and all of my loan officers just as much. And uh, so that's my probably my biggest struggle is making sure that I, I execute on those and I don't get distracted. Um, and I think one of the successes is really whittling down to what my vital few really are. Um, sometimes I think I'm more important than I really am. And when you boil it all down, strip away all the fluff, you know, it really just comes down to me prospecting for new clients and relationships, presenting mortgage solutions to clients and prospects, and building and strengthening the relationships that have been created. Um, there's a lot of steps in those three, but, you know, that's, that's what it boils all down for me. You know, using the Edge to present mortgage solutions to clients, using my other softwares to maintain those relationships and prospecting for net new business. So, um, amazing, changing, life-changing program. I'm a big Darren Hardy fan from the compound effect, and this has just been amazing. I've sent a ton of $500 off gift cards to everybody, and I'm hoping, hoping everyone on my team will, will take this seriously. They've all got the compound effect now, and when they make it through that, they're going to take the next step into insane productivity because it's, it's a, it's a lifesaver for me. No, I love that. I appreciate uh, you sharing on that. So um, there's so many, so many first questions I could ask, but talk to me about, so when you say that you're struggling with, with your jam sessions, what, what is it that you're doing? Are you, how are you setting yourself up? Are you, are you in your office? You're out of your office. Are you turning everything off, including your cell phone or what does that look like for you? Um, I, I think it's pinning down the biorhythm, as, as you know, Darren talks about, is finding out when I'm at my best and when these, when I actually have a higher likelihood of pulling it off, and and what that looks like for me is 
uh, arriving at the office at seven and running right into a jam session. Don't don't screw around. Don't open the email. Just do it. You know what you have to do from you know your bookends from the previous day. Just execute on it. Um, but you know, I, I don't believe I've been diagnosed with ADD, but I sure do feel like it a lot of the time. Like I think almost everybody else does. So um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that that second um, jam session. I'm, I'm pretty good about that first 7 a.m., but trying to get get you know focused and insulated so that I can execute on that second jam session is, is probably the hardest part. Yeah, it seems like that's the number one challenge that, you know, congratulations on getting the first one done. I think most people struggle with that, but I think it's the afternoon. Anytime it's later in the day when you've got fires, when, when other things are happening and you've got emails and phone calls to return, uh, what has there, have you noticed anything that's, and different on the days where you're successful on that than when the days where you aren't? Yes, absolutely. Um, I am a cooler, calmer cucumber when I execute on that. Um, I don't have that frenetic energy and it helps me with my decision-making process. Um, I can solve some of those issues a lot quicker and really I am probably 50 times more productive. So my day is done a lot quicker and if I could just recognize that in the moment and say, hey, you're already done with so much more, you might as well rock right into a jam session, it would, it would help me out quite a bit because, uh, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the goal is get more done in less time and uh, more focus and it, it, it's all a reality. It's just a matter of getting into that discipline for me. Oh, I love it. Helps me with my decision-making process and makes me 50 times more productive. Um, I mean, if that doesn't sum it up, that's, that's huge. And then you also mentioned you're trying to get your team to do, do jam sessions. What, is, what does that look like? Um, I'm actually getting them into stage one of you know, just the compound effect, laying that framework so that you know, when you graduate to this jam set, and maybe, it, maybe I'm doing it incorrectly, I should just go right at it, but um, I've got everybody going through the book, um, you know, I'm, I'm making sure that they grasp the concepts um, that are presented in the compound effect because that was my first game changer for me from a productivity standpoint. Um, and I would like everybody to follow that path and get the same uh, benefit out of that framework um, and maybe use, uh, you know, the mortgage coach insane productivity model uh, to take it as like a, a graduate program, if you will, so that you can really cement some of the, the skill sets and disciplines that you learn in this program just to you know, speed their, uh, their progress in, in taking back control of their day. Because I, I can sit here and listen and watch uh, what goes on in their world and it, it doesn't take too long to recognize me about you know, three and a half years ago going crazy. No, I love that. That's that's really cool. I love that you're doing it with your team. You know, it's interesting because, again, I get asked about my team a lot, and so I'll kind of throw in. Uh, we've my, my business partner leads a daily call every day from 845 to 9, and, and we track what the team members do. I've talked about it before, calls they're making, conversations, meetings, et cetera. And, um, and he added on there that they have to report how it's got to be a minimum of 15-minute increments, but how much time they spent being proactive. So it's for, for these guys, they're not doing the business development part, so they don't really, pro, their prospecting isn't like some of it would be for you guys. They're really just doing follow-ups on leads and applications and just being proactive with the things that it's required to be a loan officer. And, and it's been slow to get the team to adapt. Uh, there's eight loan officers on the team. And it was interesting because this week for the first time I sat in on a call and one of the loan officers has been most resistant, pretty smart. I got my MBA with her. She's been on the team for a year. Um, and she averages uh, about 10 to 12 calls a day, proactive outbound calls. And uh, she reported 28 the first day, 27 the next day, and lo and behold, five applications um, the following days after being, being proactive. So as you're thinking about uh, what you're hearing JC say, don't be afraid to encourage your team along. 
Um, I think the biggest thing with it, though, is you have to do it. You have to lead by example. If if the team doesn't see it, uh, then they're not going to. If they don't see you doing it, they're not going to believe in that. Um, so I just I love hearing JC that you're you know that you're doing that. Um, I'm sure some other people probably have a question on it. You said that you've got this plugged in in your car. So what technology do you did you use to get it from your computer so that you can hear it when you're driving in your car? Um, I just use I'm, I'm an Android user, so um, inside of the Insign Productivity, uh, I downloaded all the workbooks, took the MP3s, dropped them, labeled them so that they all go in order, um, and created a uh, basically an album of Insane Productivity. And um, Google Play is pretty cool, or uh, Music, whatever they call it, their their version of iTunes. Pretty neat. You just drop it into a folder on your phone, and uh, off you go. Bluetooth. Uh, getting my MBA in insane productivity. See, I love that. So again, if you're thinking about this, that you haven't listened to this more than once, or you're struggling with it, it's that net time that that Darren talks about, right? No extra time, right? Do do what JC did. Figure out how to listen to it in your car, so that way, you know, when you're driving around, instead of you know, listening to the latest Justin Timberlake, you're listening to a little bit of Darren. So that's that's super cool. Um, any other ideas that you have that we could stoke this group that refuses to ask questions and raise their hands today into some conversation? Uh, hey, hey, let me come on in, Dave. Well, no, I'll go ahead and answer that question. Then I have a couple thoughts, and something I just want to put a wrap bow on. I think my one of my only um, things to add is that there's motivation behind trying to get my team on board with this, and I think you touched on it a little bit uh, before. Is that if we can all kind of jive into the same system? I've got my I've got my I run a op center as well, and I've got that team starting to get exposed to it and taking jam sessions where they're in. Uh, full outbound mode. If we can get the whole team running on the same sort of program, I think there. It, this is just an idea, but I, I really think there's going to be a real synergy in the office environment, and everybody can feed off of each other. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. My culture is super tantamount to uh, the way I run the branch, and. And that, that's what I'm trying to achieve is that everybody is on, you know, a similar plane and trying to accomplish, we're all trying to do the same thing, so we might as well all be trying to get our, our, our uh, whirlwind under control and, and trying to execute on these strategies. Love it. Love the little 4DX plug in the whirlwind, too. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Dave, what were you thinking? I had to get it off mute there. So, so Todd, real quick, what was the stat he said when he talked about the the value he was getting from doing uh, jam sessions to kick off the morning? Uh, what was the increase in productivity? Fifty five zero. Fifty times more productive. Got it. So, I mean, I, I just think of that as almost asking, like, ask yourself this question: if if there was one thing you needed to do for 60 to 90 minutes every morning, and it was guaranteed to improve your productivity, your focus, and you know make you more productive. Would you do it? And all you gotta do is an hour to 90 minutes a day. I mean that's that is what we're talking about. Now I, I do think the impact you know it might vary from person to person depending on how on strategy and how focused they are, but it is that significant. Anyways, the way you said it uh, was very inspiring to me, and while I I think I do a pretty good job. I know I can do a better job. And I, I just came away from that conversation saying, wow, I, I got to do better. I got to make sure I start my day with a jam session. And so I, I just want to wrap a bow around that, make sure everyone heard that. Whatever, whatever you need to do for yourself, I, I think it's powerful. It would be great to come back in a week or two uh, and say, hey, where are we today? And then after today's call, after a little more commitment to starting the day with a jam session, where are we at a week from now? So I, I put that challenge out to everybody on the call. Uh, I, we're not going to do a call this next Friday because of Thanksgiving holiday. 
But I, I know personally, you know, well, I've got a few takeaways from today's call. I, I am gonna, I'm gonna do better. I, I push everybody else to do better. Let's start our day with a jam session and see where we're at a couple weeks from now. Uh, the other thing I wanted to, to talk about, while I, I did something similar, I downloaded all the, the, you know, the videos and the audios. I put them in a Dropbox folder. I did put them in order so that I could access them. But I, I didn't create a playlist. Now, I'm, I'm an iPhone user, but I mean, I can create a playlist in iTunes. And so uh, that was another takeaway. Thank you for just the way you described how you, uh, you've turned them into an uh, insane productivity class that's accessible on your mobile phone. I, I've done it, but I could do it better. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fine tune my own process. And I recommend everybody on the call does the same. Uh, so two big takeaways. Thank you very much for sharing all that. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Awesome. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and mute JC. Thanks very much. If you want to add some more in, raise up your hand, but really appreciate your feedback today. Um, you know, it's interesting, Dave, that you're talking about the jam sessions and what it does. So um, again, full transparency, one of the things that Dave asked me to do was was give my two cents back in on this 12 weekly reminders. And and so it was on my on-time list, but I, I procrastinated. And uh, when I sat down uh, at the end of last week, I did it, ended up going over two jam sessions, but I took my notes from all 12 modules and I, I just did my own personal brain dump, right? What is it that I have been doing? Um, what is it that really resonated with me? And, um, and I made a one page, just a, just a dump of ideas and, and things that I want to focus on. And then I went and compared that over to the 12 weekly reminders. And I sent, I sent Dave kind of some of my, my ideas on there, but, um, but I love hearing people that are coming up with creative ways to continue to listen and continue to do this because I still think that's the, the biggest part of this. I mean, Darren talks about the fact of how few people actually uh, complete anything that they buy like this. And, you know, again, I've got a very dear friend, someone who's really close to me who bought insane productivity when Darren came and spoke uh, to a, a group of realtors two years ago, we brought him to town. And I laughed because he told me, oh, no, I never finished it. And I'm thinking, all right, you spent a lot of money on that to do it. And then the funny part is when I look at his results, his results aren't that much different today than they were two years ago. So what I look forward to, like Dave said, is as people look back on our time together, I, I got to imagine that our, that our productivity and everything that we're doing is, is increasing. Um, all right, I'm looking real quick to see if anyone's got any hands up. And I'm going to look at questions since I'm not trying not to multitask right now. Um, I will say one last thing is a personal thing I had to do. I, I have to say I got a little caught up in the election and reading the news and, and looking at Facebook. And so if you actually picked up my cell phone now, you would actually see that there's no news apps or Facebook on my cell phone anymore. Um, and so uh, although I would have posted a picture with me and my two friends at the top of Camelback Mountain on my hike, I don't have the app on there to do it anymore. And I thought, you know what, that's, that's actually okay. Um, but I had to force myself into... Uh, and to get back on, getting back on track with, uh, you know, with being insanely productive. Um, I'm going to hey, call on my good hey, friend Bob. Hey, Todd. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, hey Todd. Todd, hey, real quick. First of all, who, you were with Josh. Who, who was the other friend you were with? Um, the other guy's John Tobias. He's, uh, he's the number one producer in Maricopa County. Um, and uh, sadly, it's my team who's number two. Really close every year, although he's, He's really crushing my team this year. He's he's kicking he's kicking it. Good 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 for him. Uh, that's cool. And I, I always just I, I thought it was a, a a great reminder for all of us. I while I didn't delete any news apps, I I definitely changed my uh, preferences. I removed my alerts. And I, I do think when you think of what it requires to be insanely productive, insanely productive, I mean, we got to focus on the things that we have impact over. And I'm, I'm not here to say, hey, we're Americans. We need to be informed. You know, we need to be smart around certain things. But, to, you know, I, I know how Darren would respond, you know, hearing how I've seen him speak enough time. I've listened to his class. Uh, I, I do think just as a, as a culture, we've, we've, we've got caught up on things that, you know, there's a lot of things we can't control that, re, you know, reduce our productivity. Uh, we don't, I don't want to turn this into any type of political conversation, but I would love to know, uh, have other people, you know, what have you done to remove the noise and add 
the signal, knowing that we've been going through a market in a just a time where there's you know there's a lot of things to take us off pace, whether it's taking our attitude off pace or taking our productivity off pace. If anybody else has something to share, we'd love to hear it. Uh, and it's all, you yeah, I think all people as you yeah, think I, it's I, I think that's great, and I think it's um, it's interesting. I'm, I'll, I'll give a little quick plug for Daniel Harkavy, who's the founder of Building Champions. Dave had him on his uh, the weekly call on Tuesday, and I haven't listened to the interview yet, um, and I it's on my homework list. I, I will be doing it within the next few days. But um, I already know from a couple friends who listened to the call, it was it was a spot on call. So it would be something maybe worth um, worth looking at. It's uh, around the anatomy of a leader, and I think that there's uh, hey, there's hey. some great knowledge there. Well, I, I do want to add value that. I mean, we solved the six perspectives on leadership. And to put a testimonial around it, I mean, it's from, you know, Darren, or not Darren, Daniel Harkavy, a guy who has studied leadership his entire life and has put together a framework. It was, it was an incredible presentation. I mean, I think for every leader, even though, you know, most of us who have studied leadership have read a lot of books, you know, study leadership. I mean, it's just required. I mean, it was Daniel flushed it. He netted it out. Super valuable call. Highly recommend it. Well, and he's a he's a great leader. And and uh, at Building Champions, we do a, a meeting every every Monday morning. And uh, one of the things that he had asked a couple weeks back was that we all protect the first thirty minutes of our day, which of course is right in line with what Darren's saying. Right, bookend your day. And, um, and it's a reminder to people, this was all, it's all employees of Building Champions, so it's the sales team, it's the support team, it's the HR team, it's assistants, and then it's the coaches as well. And, um, you know, because everyone falls away from that. But uh, that whole idea of just starting your day off uh, differently was, was one of the big pushes there. And, uh, and so it was, it was kind of fun to hear on our Monday call. We went through and everyone sort of talked about their routine. And um, my coach is Daniel's brother, Greg Harkavy, and he had come to visit me this last weekend. And, um, and he he woke up, stayed at my house, and he woke up, and I was in the middle of my of my routine. So he had me talk about it, and I, I'm not going to repeat it again because I've talked about it here before. Um, but it was really interesting to hear from other people who I think are great achievers that they're all struggling with the same things that that we are, and things that they've instituted in their day. And and so um, I would say definitely keep focused on that if you you've had challenges around uh, just all the noise, like Dave said, because um, that's kind of what it is, Dave. Right? I mean, it's just been it's just been noise. I mean. It was, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess I woke up and everything's still going on in the world. So that that's a good sign for for all of us, regardless of your political belief. And uh, yeah, right. I think that Darren's given us some tools. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, by, by the way, it just made me think. You know, hearing you talk made me think of something else. And by the way, we are getting in the last twelve minutes. So if anybody's on this call, and whether you're on module one, module two, module three. Whether you've gone, you're going through it the second time, if you do have a question, we're here to answer those. So you've got 12 minutes left. There's no bad questions. And if you have something you want to make sure we talk about, it is not too late. But a couple different things that were said. You know, one, how you mentioned the one friend who, you know, paid the money, signed up for the same productivity, didn't do it. He gave up. You know, and, and part of it, and if you're on this call and you're, let's say you bought this thing three months ago, because gosh, what are we on, like session 15 or something? Just don't give up. You know, never give up. I mean, the, the principles that we're learning, you know, there is no mastering. Uh, you know, every morning, make sure you start with a, with a, uh, a jam session. I mean, let's face it, we're going we're gonna to fail. We're going to have some bad days, bad weeks. Maybe we're only having a bad month, but just don't give up. And, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, you know, Todd, obviously, you and I, we've committed a lot. We've been on... You know, maybe you've missed one or two. Um, I don't know the number I've missed. You, you, I've missed, I think, more than you. But we're not giving up on you guys, so don't give up on yourself. Stay in this program and, and master it. And if you do master it, I've, I've got enough positive feedback now um, going through this program that it's, it's game-changing. You know, this is a, a life-changing, a productivity-changing 12-week platform. Uh, the only thing that you really have to risk is if you give up. You, you you only do two or three of them, and you give up on yourself, and you give up on the program. So I just wanted to put a, a testimonial around the or a push a button on you know don't give up on yourself or this program. Stay with it. And well, question, and one, one, make sure you hit them with us. 
Yeah, one thing I would add, right? I mean, it's, you know, I, I know, you know, there's a lot of you on this call because I see the same names in, in you know, I, I, for better or worse, I know some of you and not the rest of you, but I wish I, I knew you all. But, you know, I love to see the same names here every week, week in and week out. It, you know, tells me that you guys are learning as we're talking to um, other members of the community. So, uh, you know, I think that's that's one of the biggest, uh, you know, biggest parts here. Um, and uh, I know I scare some people when I say I'm going to randomly uh, un unmute people. So, don't uh, don't panic. I always know that there's uh, there's lots of great opportunity. But I love Dave's idea of of sticking with it. You know, I think through the holidays it's going to be really tough for all of us. Um, you know, there's just no doubt with how with how crazy it's going to be. Uh, you know that that we're going to fall off the wagon here or there. Um, and what I love about this community is you can just plug back in and, and pick right back up. And, you know, you've obviously got people who are in the middle, and then you've got people who are now done and going back through it. And that just tells you that uh, there's a lot of a lot of value here. Um, I would love um, – I'm going to unmute you, Bobby Moody, since I know you well. Um, just for, like, give me just a couple of minutes. What, uh, what are, What's working for you this week? Where are you struggling this week? Anything that, that would be good to discuss? How are you today, Bobby? Hey, Todd. Good. I'm, I'm good. It's Friday. Yay. Uh, um, I, I mean, I've been, I'm so far out of the spectrum with some of this stuff that I kind of had to start from square one, scratch one. So I'm on my sixth consecutive day of doing the Miracle Morning, getting up at 6 a.m. Awesome. And yeah, um, I'm, I'm reading, I haven't read the whole book yet, but I'm reading the book in the morning and um, I have a, a, a plan in my Bible that I'm doing with Proverbs, which has been really great. A lot of inspirational stuff, so um, doing a lot of that stuff. And um, I think I talked a little bit about, I started doing the Passion Planner. I found it on uh, the Miracle Morning. Oh, yeah. Community, yeah, and so I find it to be one therapeutic to uh, fill in a paper planner, but it's helped me be more structured in my time throughout the day because I've written it all down and I've, uh, you know, I color the morning in yellow and then I do uh, the evenings in orange because um, I'm trying to do no screens after nine o'clock so I can sleep better. So I think. What this has really helped me with is try to get my whole day a lot more structured. Uh, I haven't been doing jam sessions in the morning, so I took that away, and I already wrote that down for next week to do that in my in my morning on my planners. So, um, and I love this. I love the checklist. I printed it off in color. I'm going to put it on some thick paper so I can remember to do it every week. So there's so many amazing tools that you guys have been giving that just really helped me structure my day every day. So. Is that what you wanted, Yeah. That is perfect. And so I, I knew you'd give me a, a couple of gems to run with. So um, thank you so much as I'm going to jump on here and have Dave come in and we can close out the call. Um, I appreciate everyone who's, who's here today, everyone who's listened. And I love the fact that Bobby just said, hey, I'm six days straight into this new habit, right? I mean, it's not, you know, not what, however many days. It's funny. We talked about the Headspace app before and, you know, it was telling me how many days I had done it straight in a row. And I was like, you know, over 60 days in a row of doing headspace and then you know what one day my wife and I slept in and I got up and didn't do my morning routine and all of a sudden now I woke up and the next day I didn't have a streak anymore and so um, I think that's always the hardest thing is when you when you stop or if you even if you haven't stopped even if you haven't started is just getting going right it's just day one right it's uh, I always laugh because um, I'm on snapchat I've mentioned a couple times it's how I communicate with with my college age children they don't text although they do call because they don't like to walk alone on the streets of New York. So I hear from them a lot, but during the day I can keep track of what they're doing because they keep me updated on Snapchat and we have a streak on Snapchat. It says how many days in a row we've Snapchatted each other. And I felt really bad because my niece, who is uh, 13, I, I broke uh, my Snapchat streak with, streak with her on accident. I thought I had included her on a snap to the whole family uh, one day and I didn't and it was a streak. And I just said, hey, it's okay, we get to we get to start over. And she's like, you know what, you're right, Uncle Todd, that'll be a, a great thing. And so just start today and, and get something going. Um, the other piece that, that I wanted to kind of close out with, and, and uh, Dave, you can jump in at any point uh, if you want, is um, just kind of how to set up the whole idea of, 
of Thanksgiving and kind of some things to look at uh, between now and the end of the year. As Dave mentioned, we're not going to do a call next Friday. I, I got to imagine that uh, many of us will be taking the day off. And so uh, I would say that a couple of things. From a prospecting perspective, I think the number one thing that we can all do in the loan world to this next week, um, whether we're uh, taken off this afternoon or whether we're taken off the middle of next week is, is a little bit of gratitude. It's on our checklist. And I would start with those people who work alongside of you day in and day out, whether it's a team member, whether it's an underwriter, whether it's a processor. Um, and I would just make sure that we're saying thank you, especially this time of year. It's also the easiest phone call to make to someone that you haven't talked to. And it doesn't matter how long it is. You know, if you haven't talked to somebody in a year, uh, it's a great time just to call up and say thanks, right? Hey, sorry we haven't connected. I was just thinking of you and I'm really grateful for our friendship. And so I always think from a loan officer's perspective, um, don't ever um, forget the humanity piece and just calling someone and tell them you're grateful for who they are because I really do think that goes a long way and it's really easy this time of year um, just to open up a relationship that you may have not been as diligent as, at follow-up as you should be and it's a great thing to be coaching your team members on right who is it around you um, that you can be grateful for um, it's also a great time just to reflect on life right building champions is a company of life planners um, and I, I kind of view uh, Darren, when he starts going through, especially when you're in like module six, module seven, um, module five, he starts really talking about designing your life. And so this is also a really good time if you're away with the family and you've got time just to pull back. I, I tend to see that people's hearts are full uh, and you're thinking positive thoughts and it's a perfect time just to step back and, and do a little bit of life planning, thinking about your life. If you've got um, questions on that, I, I, I told Dave about a month ago, I would I would post up in there. I've got some copies of Daniel's and Michael Hyatt's book, Living Forward on Life Planning. I'll post that up into the into the Facebook community. If anyone wants a copy, just private message me. Um, I taught a couple classes on it this year, and I bought extras. So if anyone would like a copy on that, but I really, in the end, I think it's just a great time to to take time to reflect on your life. And I'm talking personal life. Certainly, you can add some of your business and where you want to go. But as I said, I think that's where we're going to hit the ground running in December, right? I think December. This call is going to be, uh, I think, take on kind of a lot of what we've seen, right? We're going to continue to talk about it. What's our vital three, right? What what are the things that we should be doing day in and day out? Are we still bookending our day? The things that we need to do to get our jam sessions done, the things that we need to do to know that not only are we going to close out 2016 with excellence, but that we're set up to hit 2017 running. Because in the end, I think that's the biggest advantage that you all have from being part of this community whether this is your first time here or whether you've been with us you know, for the whole ride, is that um, we got to take what we did and we got to act on it. We got to put it into it. We got to implement it. We got to make it so it's something that we can use and do going forward. And so um, that's, that's where Dave and I come from. Um, I love the fact that um, Dave has continued to um, allow us to do these calls every week. Um, we're doing them because we're passionate about helping all of you grow and those around you get the benefit of, of what it is that you're doing. And so Really from here, I just want to say I hope everyone has a fabulous Thanksgiving. Um, if you need anything from Dave or I, you know where to find us. Just reach out. We're happy to help. Um, no call uh, next week, um, but just know that uh, December 2nd, two weeks from today, that we are going to hit the ground running and we're going we're to help hit it hard to close out the year with success. So we look forward to seeing you all there. Um, very grateful for you guys. Really appreciate it. And, uh, look forward to uh, wrapping up this year strong and kicking off 2017 with all of you. Uh, Todd, you want to wrap it? Or yep, you... that's a wrap. Unless you want to throw anything all right, guys. in there, Dave. No, just, I, I like your message around reach out to people that mean a lot to you. I, uh, one of my great mentors, Bob Bodine, the author of Power of Who, you know, really uh, inspired me years ago. I don't know how many years ago. How important it is to do, you know, make friends with the people you do business with, and and uh, sometimes as business people, we get so focused on strategic relationships. You know, call your high school friends. You know, this is the time to take inventory on the people that, uh, whether it's business and strategic friends or high school friends that you haven't talked to for years, reach out, show love, tell them how much you appreciate them. Have a great weekend, everybody, and uh, I'm not going to repeat everything Todd said. Looking forward to crushing it in the weeks to come. Bye, everybody. <laughs>